All right, this is Jimmy Cab's Tape the Broadcast, 5150 Interview Series, the very manic Jimmy Cab Show and Bulldozer Magazine here on a lovely afternoon, sunset, West Hollywood at the Whiskey A Go Go with Lips of Anvil. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Welcome back to California. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Thank you. Let's start off right off the bat. Anvil, 1978, one of the premier metal bands that ahead of its time. You've had so many established musicians from members of Metallica, Slayer, on and on and on, who credit you for the inspiration, who credit... Lots of un, 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 unfamous people, too. <laughs> they credit you in fact, for... In fact, more of those than, than the famous guys. <laughs> My question to you is, it's here we are, what, 38, 39 years later? Yeah. How are you doing this? How is it possible? How do you keep the stamina, the fire, and the drive to keep doing this? Uh, I what? What else would I do? That's wh- who and what I am. I'm, I find it actually dumbfounding how people ask me that. Would you like me I, to elaborate a little more? Well, what I mean is that do do people ask their doctor how do they manage or 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 their tailor or their dentist or their or their uh, or their marriage? But you, you ask. How do I manage being married for 30 years? The, how, did my, how did my parents manage to do it for 60 years? Lawyers, doctors, and so forth, they are compensated with the rewards of that. Oh, you the, mean road, the road... In other words, money. The road, the road takes a lot out of us, the energy. It takes physically. And let's just be very frank here. It takes a certain individual that can do this for so many decades and not be crushed by the road. How do you do that? How do you maintain that? So I many. Don't drink. I don't drink booze. It's that simple. You don't drink booze, you don't get fucking burned out. How about that? <laughs> That's a very, uh, very wise, very uh, well, what I would it's say. Not, it's not a question of wisdom. It's not wisdom. It's just a fact of life. Really, I mean, you you drink, and everybody knows what happens to you when you drink. It damages all your major organs. What do you think happens? Burns your brain out. I mean, you know, people talk about, hey, man, you shouldn't smoke marijuana. You know what? If you replace marijuana with all the people that drink, we'd probably all live a lot longer, and we'd have a much more peaceful place to live. I would agree with you on that. Do you find it interesting that in this day and age, now where we're at, marijuana no longer has that stamina and all that taboo that was back when we were growing up, now it's finally the truth is resurfacing amongst not only the youth, but the older generation? That's a, that's, that's a hard question to answer. Obviously, things are moving in a positive, a much more positive direction today. Um, I mean, Canada's like a year or two off of legalizing it. It should have been done decades ago. Yeah. It should never have been illegal to begin with. That's that's a whole other issue. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a really positive thing. One of the things that I've always respected about Anvil throughout the decades is the fact that you've stayed consistent, that you stayed what I would say steadfast with the determination to keep producing music, getting on the road. Because do you, I didn't do it for money. Elaborate a little more. I don't do it for money. What is it that you enjoy when you do this? Playing. Do you enjoy the music. kids that are out there? Music. Creating music and recreating it when I go play live and playing in front of an, all, an audience. Nothing is more fulfilling. It, if I make a living at it, that's all I need. If I'm making my living, and that's what I've actually attained. When the movie, after the after the movie and all that stuff, of course it's all dissipated now. It's obviously not a fresh new thing. Right. We're nine years after the fact, you know. It's so it's it's certainly 
it certainly changed everything, but I haven't had to go back to do deliveries for Choice Children's Catering. I haven't been there in, in nine years. But which and is- I've been doing Anvil only, but I'm making a living. I am not a millionaire. I will never become a millionaire from it, and nor do I want to. I will never, I, my, my intentions were, from, from the time I was a kid, was to make the heaviest music I could possibly make for as long as I possibly could, physically and mentally as a human being, and never sell out, ever. From day one you made From that day fucking one. And I have stuck by my fucking original philosophies and never changed. Is that why Anvil's music's never been tarnished? Is that why you've always retained that integrity? And is that why even whether it's the older fan base or the newer fan base, you still get that angst and that grip when you hear new Anvil or what they would say the uh, well, earlier there's, there's, there, there's no there you can hear that there's no intention of looking for radio play some people find that um, find that really detrimental they think that we're fools and that we wasted our lives and our time really yes Oh, there's many people that believe, hey, you've got your foot in the door. Why wouldn't you write a commercial song and make money from the radio? Because it's not in your heart, man. You're doing it for real. Oh, no, it's not. a. It's, it's, you know, it's funny because through the years, of course, we've had songs where I've had, uh, musically speaking, the song. That could go on the radio, no problem. And what do I do? I apply the lyrics. Lyrics that will never get radio play. <laughs> so what you get is somewhat anthematic, um, catchy songs that were either filthy and completely inappropriate. Rock and roll, right? Right, and they would never play it on the radio, but for the kids, who buy the records, they love those songs and they become our classics. Yeah. Songs like Butter Bus Jerky, um, Mad Dog, for that matter. I mean, that was probably one prime example. Or or the song Backwaxed, that was originally recorded for the, the Forge and Fire album. And I pulled it off. I had the record company remove it from that list and it wasn't didn't come out on that record it came out separately mm. as the title track for a bunch of unreleased stuff mm-hmm. now that song was extremely melodic backwaxed in itself was extremely melodic but what was it about <laughs> so it was not it was never going to get radio play um, obviously the song mad dog looking for a bitch in heat begging for a doggy treat was not going to get radio play but uh, on a technical technical musical level the song uh, uh, Mad Dog was really uh, an inverted version of Cat Scratch Fever which we all know is a massive hit Uh, musically speaking arrangement wise same kind of rock and roll song the same amount of same amount of verse riffs, same amount of chorus riffs, same amount of sub chorus, same amount of lead solo. It's really the same musical arrangement with a bunch of different parts. Do you think that is the reason why till this day, 2016, there's a bunch of young kids out there excited to see you tonight because you still have that subversive, rebellious, real, genuine rock and roll attitude. Compared to, about, compared to, I think it's more about genuine. Right. It's more about the genuine thing that, and unpretentious. It's not. It was not done for the purpose. Look at. Um, <laughs> Would it be safe to say that an anvil show, an anvil show, an anvil show is a real show? What I mean by that, let me elaborate. You're up on stage, enjoying what you're doing. Number one, playing heavy, and at the same time, 
giving off a show and the energy that is not fabricated. It's real. Well, it's a real thing. It's yeah. Real thing. Well, yeah. Absolutely. That's very rare this day. You know, I don't. I live in a bubble. I I pay very little attention to what goes on out, outside my own little world. So if if that's what you're telling me. That when you go see other bands and they're not passionate or there doesn't seem to be authentic, I guess I have to believe you because I don't do a lot of show going. Right. And when I do, it's usually it's usually old school. It's old school stuff. I'll go. I'll, you know, obviously, um, some of the festivals that we do play. If I watch a band, it's going to 99.9 percent. It's going to be a band that. I grew up with, and it's going to be an old school band. Do I see passion? Uh, I can't help but see passion. It doesn't matter if I see passion in a certain sense. I'm hearing my favorite songs from my favorite musicians, so I could care less one way or the other. I'm in awe. So it's I'm still just as much of a fan. So I I don't I don't know that's, <laughs> but. I don't really take notice of, of that, maybe the way that everybody else does. But I don't watch a lot of bands, you know. I just like I like the old school bands. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, like watching Deep Purple when we were in Sweden a couple of years ago was fucking mind mind numbing. With Gillian? Yeah, with Ian Gillen, of course. All right. To this day, the way he has that capacity. Oh yeah, fuck it, and it's all there, man. It's, it's like wow, this is is you know okay. They've replaced Blackmore, and let's face it, the guitarist that they have, uh, Steve is uh, is fucking amazing, really. I mean, he plays worlds above what Blackmore did originally, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, come on, man, it's modernized. Technical, Absolutely. you know, it's not foundational like Blackmore was in discovering the stuff. There's a big difference in in, a, in the person that discovers it and the other person who's perfected it. Right. And I think that that's what I hear is as the main difference. So, yeah, you're hearing Blackmore-esque solos, but played with such fluidity, Blackmore in, in, in his wet dreams couldn't do it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, 